Assalamu alaikum. Ladies and uh, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Institute of Marine Engineering, Science and Technology uh, Technical Meeting. My name is uh, Nikhi Litnani. I'm the Honorary Secretary of the Institute's uh, UA branch. Uh, as we move into the 1st of Jan 2020, the, the bunkering business and shipping in general is going to be taking a whole new twist. Uh, this whole, this whole procedure of uh, transferring liquid through that pipe is going to be a bit different than we are doing it today. The IMO has, uh, as you're, most of you are aware, uh, with effect from 1st of Jan uh, 2020, there will be a global sulfur cap on uh, marine fuels. Uh, obviously, the other options being uh, using abatement technologies, i.e. scrubbers or resorting to alternate energy sources. As the little bit of reading that I do, I believe 90% of ships will be resorting to uh, using low sulfur fuels. I was reading uh, this interesting article in the IMRS uh, magazine, The Marine Professional, and uh, I just took a clip. Most importantly is marine uh, compliant fuels won't come cheap. Which means, if you either resort to compliant fuels or scrubbers, which you won't have a choice to be honest, so uh, no, no escape on that, it's going to cost you some money. You're gonna pay some, there's gonna be a capex on that. Also with the current uh, scenario in most sectors of shipping, of course other than, uh, other than bulk carriers, as I was listing over that uh, beer, okay. Uh, but uh, Dalit might uh, be able to also, uh, I don't know, second that. Most sectors of shipping are undergoing severe pressures in terms of earnings, which is more or less out of your control. So with this uh, brief scenario, what's gonna happen starting 1st Jan 2020? Obviously for ships to continue trading and to do so without interruption in trade, the, the equipment that you install should be reliable for starters. <coughs> they should be of adequate capacity, uh, obviously matching the capacity of uh, your, your consumption typically. And <laughs> uh, in order to keep this in check, OPEX in check, there should be low energy consumption. And certainly, last but not the least, uh, not only uh, the efforts should be minimal in terms of uh, maintenance, but for sure in maintenance costs, again, relating to OPEX, which takes primary focus, should be under control uh, or as much as possible. This evening, we will discuss uh, the SO part what kind of equipment is, is going to be part of this, uh, this brief uh, future fuel challenge? Okay, uh, please allow me to introduce our uh, best speaker of the evening, uh, Sven Mario Yalinski. Almost correct. Yeah. Almost correct. <laughs> <laughs> He's the head of sales for Marine and Energy uh, for GE Westphalia uh, Separated Group. Uh, Sven graduated from the uh, Hawk School of Bremer, Germany. He is 48 years old, married, and has three daughters. He spent four years with the MAN BMW uh, diesel in Augsburg in global service, five years with the uh, Glamox uh, Aqua Signal as sales and project manager in the luxury yacht, ferry, and cruise business, and one year with BESI Marine Systems as area sales manager. Since 2007, he's been with GEA in various positions from 2009 till end of 2011. Sven has been in the separator group as regional sales manager for process related applications in beverage, dairy, renewable resources, and chemistry. Welcome in Dubai, uh, Herr Gelinski. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, hello everybody. Also a warm welcome from my end. Uh, Nikhil, fantastic introduction. I would like to thank, first of all, you as sitting in the audience because what I learned, uh, it's Thursday evening, it's quite challenging to attract people and uh, that makes us actually, on behalf of here, even more happy that the room is nearly filled up with uh, high qualified and motivated uh, persons like you. Huh? So once again, thanks for coming. And since everything is not easy to organize, as we know, I mean, Nikhil is always doing a great and fantastic job. He's ambitious uh, and energetic all the time. 
I would also spend at least one minute to thank especially our ladies, Sunil, but also here my uh, colleague in Gea Middle East, Faisal, and at the end of the keynote, I first gesagt, so there, there's uh, Sunil and uh, yeah, um, uh, Sonali for arranging everything and for making uh, this happen. Huh? So thank you very much for all your assistance and for all your uh, support. Good. Yeah, what uh, am I trying to share tonight? Um, uh, we could speak, let's say, easily two hours about innovation and changes and news and upcoming difficulties in the marine industry. So I put a couple of uh, words on the agenda and I will start in the beginning a bit what GEA does and what GEA does in marine. Because um, GEA actually is only in B2B business and uh, normally uh, not really visible uh, because uh, we don't do advertisement in magazines, uh, I mean in uh, fancy magazines and uh, we also have no things which you can buy as an end consumer. So majority or even when I'm talking to youngsters, uh, they don't really know what GEA is capable to do. Uh, yeah, Cypher Cap has already been mentioned by Nikhil here, but I think cost, uh, cost, cost, cost is in each and everybody's mind. How to break that down, how to make our vessels in the long run uh, more competitive. And of course, even when I was standing outside here, crew, skills, what kind of crew is on the market uh, is also more and more of, uh, let's say, concern. Can we get fit, smart, and clever people, or are they basically just operators? And the systems has really, let's say, changed in the way of uh, making it, let's say, easier. Uh, easier to use, easier to repair, easier to, to handle. Um, smart monitoring, I think that is one of the key issues and uh, comes also with a bunch of opportunities for us, even if the marine industry is quite conservative, frankly huh? uh, speaking. And um, ultra low sulfur fuel oil, I think also a big question mark, uh, where you take bunker, what kind of uh, surprises uh, have been delivered and how to get uh, rid of cat fines, for instance. Yeah, and the, the main topic, of course, is our new marine separator. This, as you could see when you, let's say, came to the first floor, the integrated direct drive. And if you have some time, then also questions and answers. So, GEA and our markets. So I will just focus on um, uh, the separation part and give you a, a couple of ex examples. Huh? So we do a lot in beverage. When you take a cup of coffee or tea, huh, the likelihood that it has been clarified by GEA centrifuges is more than 50%. Mango juice, pineapple juice, things like that. Huh? You can adjust the pulp content whether it's 10%, 20% in uh, uh, the, uh, these flex packs to be taken out with the decanter centrifuge. This is all what we do in beverage. And dairy, skimming, standardization, whether the milk has 1.5% or 3.5%, this can be adjusted also with our uh, standard standard Roman. And then we have, I mean, a wide range in re resources, palm oil, edible oil, but also latex and um, uh, but else, fish oil, for instance, huh, can be processed, clarified, separated. In chemical pharmaceutical technology, there is, yeah, I must say, fortunately for us, a hype, huh, because the people are eating more or less uh, unhealthy. They are moving less. That's why we need uh, more things to overcome, huh, like diabetes, huh, insulin, and so on. So this is really. Uh, in an upcoming business. Bad for the people, bad for society, but at the end, good for GEA. Huh? Yeah, marine energy and oil and gas is, uh, in terms of the applications, uh, pretty close together and uh, belongs uh, to each other, except the uh, requirements of uh, certification and the paperwork. So for marine, we are dealing with these well known classification societies. Uh, in energy applications, it is not necessary. But uh, other rules, power, frequency shift is a concern, and for oil and gas is a 
totally different story with explosion proof equipment and so on. And um, at the end, uh, environmental application, okay, uh, no one wants to be in touch with that, uh, but uh, uh, Gear has also here, I mean, a long uh, reference list when it comes to dewatering and the thickening of uh, waste, sludge, things like that. So just in brief. And uh, we in uh, Gear uh, slash separation do that with two different kind of uh, centrifuges. So I don't know how many of you have been in touch with a decanter or with a disc stack centrifuge, but just to share some uh, ballpark figures here. I mean, this one here on the left is a, uh, is a dairy uh, centrifuge, and uh, we have a range from 200 millimeters up to bowl diameters of nearly one meter. Huh? And the smaller ones, they run with an RPM of uh, 12,000 per minute. And uh, I mean, it's an incredible figure, I think. You can process and these kind of centrifuges up to 500,000 liters per hour. And just as a decision criteria, because quite often, so when the disk tech centrifuge can be used, when is the decanter centrifuge more suitable, it is a question of the uh, particle size, but also on the, uh, on the, on the uh, uh, concentration, basically. And so for this one, we actually are in favor whenever the particles are at 4.5 micron or above. So for a decanter, same thing. So from 200 millimeter, bowl diameter up to one meter. The biggest fellows, we have uh, 30 units in Changi, wastewater reclamation plant. And uh, you can process up to 350,000 liters per hour. So there's a scroll uh, rotating inside of the bowl, which is uh, slightly faster and then you get actually rid of the particles, or you can even have the three-phase <coughs> separation. Okay, and uh, the particles should be larger than five micron. So coming to the playground of marine and energy, that's actually the reason why I'm here. Uh, what is GEAR um, offering for this industry? Uh, this will be, I mean, coming at the end of my slides here, but we reintroduce basically the EFI-Clean technology. Why? Um, cleaning a HFO centrifuge is not an easy job. Uh, every time you open the bowl, you have to change the gaskets. Uh, this is also linked to cost. And uh, we have a very good cooperation in place. And, uh, have a bunch of references on really tough uh, uh, plants, Marco plants in Greece, and we figured out that this is an alternative for intermediate cleaning. So after, let's say, two months, depending on the, uh, on the uh, HFO you are burning, you're using, uh, you just connect this EFI-Clean system and you flush the disc without opening the bowl. And you can extend, actually, the operating time of the bowl up to one year without the need of uh, doing manual cleaning. Since one year, um, I mean, this was in the media, I think, not only in, uh, in uh, yeah, well-known economic magazines, but also here uh, in the Middle East uh, published. So we are now under one roof. Uh, no more separate divisions, departments, companies. So it's year. And uh, this is also good for Marine because uh, we can now cooperate with the fellows from Netherlands, from uh, Berlin, and even from, uh, from Italy, Interfrigo, to offer provision cooling units or refrigeration cooling systems for these small compressor refrigeration units, which are mainly used on omnibuses. I mean, whenever you're sitting on a bus huh, and you have time and you know the driver, just open the hatch door or the back door and uh, also very high likelihood so that... Nearly uh, half of them in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So also here we have a pretty high market share. Okay, then, I mean, this is uh, one stage uh, 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 freshwater generator from 10 to 30 tons per day. And for the cruise industry, we have even small decanters installed, also for the uh, thickening of the uh, wastewater. Yeah, our well-known uh, OSE, belt-driven centrifuge, no? which is uh, still uh, available, and uh, bilge water treatment technologies by centrifugal force no? in different uh, ranges. 
but with the uh, US Coast Guard certificate of uh, delivering, um, uh, what is it here, uh, 5 ppm, 5 ppm. And uh, quite often the question comes also up, okay guys, huh? Bilge water treatment technology with a centrifuge is perhaps much higher than a static view oil. But in terms of reliability, in terms of efficiency, yeah, it's also delivering uh, totally different results. Yeah? And uh, I mean, uh, in these yeah, maritime media, from time to time, you also see how much money, uh, penalty, cruise lines, or even uh, uh, merchant uh, uh, shipping companies uh, had to pay, then is uh, I think better investment to approach there yeah, and to buy one of all bitch master treatment systems. Huh? Yeah, and uh, if you want, I mean we have uh, sold quite a few also in the cruise industry when it comes to additional safety. Huh? You can even shift the sensitive parts into a separate box which is called safety master so that manipulation by the crew in terms of uh, the oil water monitor or the uh, overboard, uh, these two, three, well that overboard cannot be, uh, cannot be done. This one here is a product from our partner, Trojan Marinex, is a Canadian company and um, we had a bit, let's say, issues in terms of the US Coast Guard type approval, so we have been the first who applied for that, but I don't know how deep you are in this uh, issue. There was an alternative test method used, uh, which is MPN, and uh, this was till yesterday not uh, uh, considered by the US Coast Guard. And on, uh, let's say today is Thursday, so on Tuesday there was an official voting in the US Congress, and this alternative test method has passed. So, wieder, ne? Uh, Vessel Incidental Discharge Act actually was successful and now we can also move on in terms of the US Coast Guard type approval procedure. So we will, we will be back on stage, no? with other words. Sludge tree strength, also here to make it uh, short, uh, we can reduce the volume of sludge by easily 90%. So whenever disposal cost is an issue because majority of the sludge is, uh, is water, yeah. we can take it out. And uh, this is the first solution also in terms of uh, changing compositions and uncertainties in uh, bunker fuel, residual fuel. Um, we introduced the cat find master into the market. I will speak about that on separate slides, but uh, this has uh, various options also to, let's say, fine tune the treatment process huh? and make it at the end more efficient to avoid consequential costs or damages on crucial engine or fuel parts. And um, this one here is a uh, yeah, special development, it's a bit tailor-made. So we have also a uh, range of scrubber water treatment units huh, for scrubber manufacturers, like Wärzeler, for instance, ME production, Sake. Huh. So whenever you consider a scrubber from those companies, closed loop or hybrid, the likelihood of getting Besides the scrubber, the wash water treatment plant from gear is pretty high. And um, okay, to finish this slide here, VBU and uh, boiler booster units. Uh, Faisal was asking yesterday, boiler booster units, <coughs> it is a new, let's say here, new word. Yeah, uh, it's also tailor made for a company like uh, Zagre to, let's say, uh, to prepare the, yeah, the fuel uh, to run the boiler systems. Nikhil asked me, uh, to have a high technical content in my presentation and not so much marketing stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I checked the participant list mm -hmm. yesterday and I decided, well, okay, let's at least inform or teach the newcomers in marine mm -hmm. a little bit of the bowl hydraulic or to refresh the knowledge of the senior engineers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, depend, it, it depends uh, from which uh, perspective of the angle you are coming. Huh? <laughs> so, I mean, I don't want to overstress you here, gentlemen. But just uh, because, or let me ask you a question. Who knows what uh, the unit tool system is capable to do? Okay, who knows 
what the Unitroid system is capable to do and is a bit afraid to raise a hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. A bit fun. So, in brief, um, we do not need any kind of, um, let's say, uh, uh, process water inside of the bowl. So, it's a, a system which runs uh, just with the product. Yeah? And uh, we have an integrated sensing line to measure whether there is water in the residual fuel or whether there are too many particles, sludge, inside. So in this case here, uh, you see we have here uh, sludge accumulated, then we have a water phase, and the, uh, the clean product is going through this sensing line, passing uh, the conductivity sensor, and is in this case, detecting oil fine, oil clean, is just treated oil. Huh? Keep going. So, but what happens when uh, uh, there is too much water accumulated for whatever reason? I mean, it could also be that there is a leakage on the heater, huh? and you are getting basically uh, uh, from other sources uh, water inside of your fuel system. Then, actually, it's uh, also going this way, and the sensor is detecting it. Huh? And then this discharge valve opens <coughs> for a while. And sure, huh, HFO contains uh, by nature a lot of water. So um, as long as this is not exceeding a certain, let's say, amount, huh, then it goes, it closes, it opens, all fine. But if too much constantly away or being present at the sensor, then you also get an alarm. Huh? And you have to check whether there's uh, another issue in your system. For sludge, it's a bit different. For sludge, is uh, uh, as we have here this uh, sensing line and the uh, separating disc. And when this hole here is blocked, then you have a pressure drop in the sensing line, huh, which is uh, shown here. So the pressure is basically falling, and that is an indication too much sludge in the bowl. Ejection is necessary, and then the uh, sensor overrules <coughs> the timer setting. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you also have this experience, you operate the centrifuge perhaps 90 minutes or even 120 minutes, and then you do it uh, timer controlled. Uh, okay, so, and now we come to the bowl working principle. So how is actually uh, the closing chamber uh, working? So we have a cross section through the bowl. I mean, this is running in theory now, let's say 12,000 uh, RPM, and we inject the operating water from the bottom. This is uh, generating a certain pressure, uh, uh, and is closing the, uh, the sliding piston. And uh, whenever this, let's say, water is not properly filled, or whenever there are other issues, then the product escapes, uh, and the bowl is not properly closed. Uh, that is actually, could be one of the reasons. Huh? So that product is uh, fed into the bowl, and uh, after a certain period of time, we have uh, the three different uh, phases inside, and uh, yeah, all good. Huh? I need to wait for the second number here. Takes a moment. And then we start to uh, trigger the injection, and the Crucial factor here is to minimize also the product losses. No? I mean, HFO, LO, uh, it's basically all the same. So we make sure that they are basically just uh, the particles and uh, the water inside of the bowl before we uh, trigger a bit more operating water and we move the sliding piston uh, downwards so that everything is flushed out and this deck is even cleaned. No? by the velocity, uh, velocity of the water. And then the whole thing starts from, from the beginning. All right, I just need a bit of water here. You said no water needed. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one not? That's correct. Okay, so, um, residual fuel. Different kind of um, compositions, ISO 8217. In theory, uh, according to the specification, uh, cat fine should not exceed 60 ppm, as you know. 
but uh, I am quite convinced that you have also seen bunker reports where this figure was uh, close to 100 or even exceeded 100 ppm. And that was actually uh, also a um, trigger point for GEAR to come back with a, a bit advanced uh, uh, technology because um, this one here has um, two additional features. The first one is you can ramp up the product temperature from usually 98 degrees C to 110 degrees C. And you have on top the option to reduce or to adjust the flow, which is going through the centrifuges, depending on your lab uh, tests or even depending on your bunker report or when you simply feel with the fuel something is not in order. Huh? So at, um, uh, with this design here, we can actually warrant that the cat fine content is less than 5 ppm, and the particles are not or are uh, smaller or larger than, uh, uh, than 3 micron. So at, on top of that, this is a special and tailor-made skit. We have uh, developed this in, I mean, significant, wealthy uh, company in the oil and gas industry. So we have even here added an additional module, which is taking samples uh, in the feed and in the discharge. So you can measure real time how good the separator works. And if the figures are changing for whatever reason, you can immediately take the signal from this cat guard system and um, let's say, uh, take control or adjust the process. In these two ways I have just described. What we also have done for a huge container uh, line, that we took the uh, real fuel consumption from the um, visco booster unit, also into our control panel. Uh, because why should I process uh, simply too much HFO when the system is in balance and I make use of the centrifugal field? Uh, then I also consequently increase my uh, my efficiency, and at the end of the day, this can cost uh, this can save you a lot of money because uh, an uh, engine failure caused by cat fines can cost you billions of dollars. And downtime is another story, of course. So the question was also in our team because the marine industry, as I said, uh, is a bit conservative and wants always uh, approved data, uh, so preferred from an independent third party. And we have made this test together with the DNVGL in, uh, in Germany before we went to the market. And this is a bit too low here because it should be at 10, but it uh, gives you an idea what the improvement can be. So when we just, uh, let's say, consider this curve here, so three micron particles uh, added to the test oil at a temperature from 98 degrees C. Uh, then you have, uh, let's say, your operating point in theory here somewhere at uh, 1,000 liter per hour in order to be compliant with MBN BMW, for instance. Uh. So and, uh, if you, let's say, play a little bit with the process temperature and you increase it, you can uh, operate at 1,500. So you see efficiency-wise or capacity-wise, it's almost 30 or let's say 50% higher. And we have even used here for, um, for, the, uh, uh, for the larger particles a concentration of 80 ppm, just to show, let's say, the efficiency of that, uh, of that concept. Yeah, scrubber, wash water, treatment. Um, uh, I want to accelerate a little bit here. We have three different models. Uh, and in the standard uh, configuration, they are coming like this. So we have a clarifier in the first stage, and we have a purifier in the second stage. Huh? So to remove the particles, and of course also to polish the wash water. This is needed also to stabilize uh, it in terms of the, chemi uh, the chemistry. So and, um, these are the three crucial fa factors which have to be met before the uh, wash water can be discharged back into the sea, for instance. Huh? Then is the philosophy whether you decide for an open loop scrubber, hybrid, or closed loop scrubber. So this kind of uh, technology is only used for hybrid 
and for closed loop. So just also in brief, huh? uh, a very simplified uh, uh, P and ID. So the scrubbing water is pumped here in circle, and uh, we take um, a certain amount of contaminated water out of it, so the bleed off, huh? and this is then treated here by the scrubber wash water treatment plant. That's why I put the centrifuge here, so that you at least know where this Pegea equipment uh, installed when we talk about uh, the scrubber wash water process. Huh? And then actually sludge disposed or even returned back to the buffer tank. Um, the PNID from our end looks like this. So we take the water from here. Uh, and then we have, after the first uh, centrifuge is split, so 50% of the flow goes back to the uh, scrubber system, and uh, the other 50% is then polished by the uh, purifier. And then also depending on the water composition, whether it is still fit for purpose, then you can actually uh, uh, switch the bleed off valve and uh, take it out of the system for disposal. And then you have to top up with fresh water. <coughs> what else here can do? Um, yeah. Modularization, I mean, this is just uh, an idea. Huh? So we're also pretty active when it comes to luxury arts. Huh? So especially here. Uh, uh, the paint requirements are very challenging, uh, not only the color, but also the gray and the thickness. Um, it's really tailor-made and uh, can also be delivered by us. So, now we so have to uh, be careful here, yeah, because but we started 50 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> so now we come to the, um, uh, to the real hot topic of this evening. Uh, what has GEA in the portfolio for the upcoming years? So, and uh, we kept um, thinking uh, this. I mean, it's unfortunately German. Only Andy Kiel understands it uh, of his history. But uh, we kept thinking together with a client here. Actually, what is needed to make it better? What is needed to simplify things on board? And then we uh, developed together. I mean, we had a. Uh, market survey in Greece. Uh, I mean, majority of the Greece owners or of the ship owners still situated in Greece in terms of soft tonnage. And of course, also with the cruise industry, which is also, I mean, uh, going up like this. Huh? Sure, they have, uh, I mean, a different market and they also have a different mindset. So they perhaps also earn a bit more money, huh? but uh, to get an understanding about their philosophy. And then it's all about defining benefits. Huh? And at the end of the day, huh, it's what can be saved. Huh? Where is the money? <coughs> and then we came to the last uh, part here, which is the conversation into reality, into a new product, huh? into a new idea. So and, uh, this um, ranking of, um, let's say, uh, concerns huh, defined by ship owners uh, is also the result of those market study. So for them, huh, they clearly said, because of the crew huh, quality, we want to have a system which is, in terms of uh, using, in terms of uh, maintenance, uh, revolutionary. So simple is best. And we also want to make it easier in terms of the installation process. Huh? More flexibility, huh? can be turned around, huh? less risk of uh, errors, things like that. Energy consumption, of course, everyone wants to be green, wants to contribute huh? to reduce, let's say, the carbon footprint, global warming, huh? I mean, like Germany, usually we have, uh, especially in summer, lots of rain, huh? but uh, between April and honestly, end of uh, October, not a single droplet then it's already a bit scary. Yeah? Uh, hopefully, uh, it is uh, just one, let's say, exceptional year. Huh? Uh, OK. And footprint, I mean, depending on the vessel uh, type, I mean, I also know uh, when we talk about an 18,000 TU container vessel, I mean, that doesn't really matter. But uh, <laughs> for ferries, for instance, uh, and for smaller vessels, it also counts. Huh? And. Uh, 35 flow rate is also uh, still of their concern. 
because I want to have a tool to compare different kind of uh, centrifuges in terms of efficiency. And last but not least, um, smart connectivity. Uh, also a question here, who of you has been to the SMM in September? You have been, okay. I mean, I was really surprised <coughs> the hype in terms of this topic. Wherever you went, whoever you spoke with, this is the future. To take, I mean, first of all, uh, OPC UA, I will talk about that also a couple of slides later, but uh, to have a, a standardized communication protocol implemented, which is actually coming from uh, the process technology, so from Namur, so from uh, shore installations, and on top of that, to uh, uh, get more reliable data from the hardware and also from the process to run more efficient and also to run more automatic. And at the, I mean, as a consequence, uh, to use that even for, let's say, maintenance planning or for maintenance uh, purposes. So when we look on our history, uh, just a bit uh, the uh, view to the past, we started with these uh, conventional gear-driven machines. And in 2010, we introduced the uh, OSC type, which had the uh, Unitroid plus box, for instance. But it was really time to, uh, let's say, to make things different. And uh, the technology, in terms of the integrated direct drive, is uh, in use for many, many years especially in the process application like beverage, dairy, huh? and is giving us, uh, I mean, uh, a pretty good feedback in terms of reliability. That's why we also thought, well, the maritime industry is almost ready. Huh? Let's go a step forward and uh, let's change uh, the philosophy also here. Huh? And that's why we said, okay, we need to put the things different or differently together. Huh? So we took the motor, the pulleys, uh, the belt, the spindle, and the bearings, which are needed to, um, let's say, uh, to fit the spindle, the spring rings, and so on, together now in one single drive module. That's it. Frequency control, all in one housing. No more single parts, no more cracked belts, no more damage bearings, no tension, no nothing. How is that? RPL is the same, because the, uh, the speed you need for the bowl is, uh, let's say, the same like for the OZ. And when we come to the essential question, what is now the benefit for the operator? What is actually the first step forward for the crew? then is the lifetime or the maintenance interval for this uh, drive unit, which is now at 60,000 operating hours. So it's double in comparison to the OSE centrifuge. So you can run two years constantly with the same uh, drive module. Great. And I think now I need the help from the broadcast center. <laughs> Proven quality meets service simplicity. How the Gaia Marine separator increases the efficiency of ships and crews by reducing complexity and focusing on the essentials. This is Frank, chief engineer on board a ship and responsible for all technical matters. He has a tough job. Ship technology is becoming more and more complex, and many tasks take up a lot of time, such as servicing a belt-driven marine separator. The whole machine has to be taken apart to exchange worn parts in a typically noisy machine room and 50 degrees Celsius heat. This is challenging and time-consuming for Frank and his crew. Can we make things easier for them? Yes with the service simplicity of the Gaia Marine Separator. The series not only features an integrated direct drive, improved efficiency, smaller space requirement, 
and 360 degree accessibility through single point suspension. The Gaia Marine Separator also allows for an extended maintenance interval, made possible by enhanced durability and a modular exchange drive unit. Instead of extensive service work after 8,000 and 16,000 running hours, the Gaia Marine Separator only requires an exchange of the drive after 16,000 hours. A reduction in maintenance complexity results in up to a 90% reduction in crew working hours, lower maintenance costs, and highest possible machine uptime. With the Gaia Marine Separator, Frank simply calls Gaia and an OEM-certified exchange drive unit module is delivered to a destination of his choice worldwide, availability guaranteed. Frank then delegates the service work to Alex, one of the newer crew members. Alex stops the separator, removes the bowl, swaps the drive unit module, places the bowl back on top, and it's done. The durable module packaging is reused to return the old drive unit. Gaia engineers then perform all necessary maintenance of the mechanism themselves, taking the complex and dirty work off Frank's and Alex's hands. Great! Frank is excited. The Gaia Marine Separator makes his life as Chief Engineer much easier. He can delegate the maintenance work to less experienced crew members. The extended maintenance interval and shortened service time requirement result in greater planning security regarding crew hours and costs, while effectively eliminating the risk of assembly errors and missing or damaged parts, as all components are included in the exchange unit. Now, Frank can focus on more complex and pressing duties. Pushing the limits with the Gaia Marine Separator. For even more efficient operation, the separators are delivered with the control system Gaia I.O. Optionally available are the centrifuge disc cleaning system Gaia Ethiclean and condition monitoring tools, allowing for highest machine availability. Gaia, proven quality meets service simplicity. For further information, contact your local Gaia service support or visit Gaia.com. So this video is also available on the internet. <coughs> or on YouTube, and if you want, you can show it to your friends, to your family members, and uh, to others, huh? so that's public. But uh, I mean, in short, it gives, an, uh, it gives a good overview about the things we have, uh, we have changed and uh, the opportunities this uh, new drive system is offering. Yeah, uh, the existing OSE range huh, <coughs> can be replaced, huh? or can be, let's say, upgraded with a so-called new marine separator. And uh, this uh, small arrow here indicates that for the, the unit 6 and 12, or 25 and 35, the drive unit is the same. So it's even interchangeable. Uh, because we have a frequency converter, and um, you can actually um, change, the speed. Yes, change the speed. Correct. Availability is actually scheduled for beginning of next year. So then we are in the position to make a real proposal and then, uh, let's say, quotation supported by technical drawings, data sheets, and so on. So now, what is actually uh, our revised marketing or sales concept for this new marine separator? Huh? So we have, of course, in this industry a lot of challenges, uh, especially when we are dealing with the yards, then uh, cost is always an issue. We need for this advanced technology and these additional features, people who are hungry for technology, who are innovative, and who are also willing to step a little bit out of the circuit. And at the end of the day, who also, let's say, take a bit money out of the pocket because they know that uh, in a very short period of time, it will be paid back. Huh? So they can actually get this one. Huh? For the others, sorry to say that very clear, huh? they can still use the OSE, but we are not going this way that we just 
introduce it and replace the old one without making, let's say, a bit more value out of our innovation. So it is a selective sales driven by the ship operators, technical managers, or by the ship owners. Okay, so same actually for other kind of industries. Huh? I mean, in uh, uh, iPhone, which is offering more features, huh? usually is not uh, less in price uh, than the previous one, huh? in simple words. Huh? So also here, we see our new marine separator <coughs> for uh, different kind of applications in this uh, upper uh, square here. And uh, why are we so confident and uh, why are we so well prepared? Huh? Because the question in terms of uh, payback time, of course, has been addressed by the owners right in the beginning. Huh? So nicer technology is good, but what actually can we make out of that? Huh? And what is actually remaining in our pocket? So <laughs> this is just an example. We took a cruise vessel here. I mean, it can also be a container ship. That doesn't matter. But when you see here on top, we have a um, standard configuration of uh, separators on board of a vessel. In this case, uh, they are, I mean, in total 10. Uh, and over the uh, operating time of uh, 10 years, you see that, let's say, uh, savings in, uh, in, the, in the range of 123,000 euro can be accumulated. And this is, of course, reflecting uh, all of the reduced maintenance time to, main, uh, to work or to replace uh, uh, the drive parts. Huh? And also, there's a significant uh, contribution to CO2 huh? reduction. Huh? So per year, 13 ton, I think uh, this is also a lot. Huh? In comparison to the entire vessel, huh? for sure, I know, but at least uh, step by step, huh? Huh? it's an improvement. And uh, the crew has a time saving of uh, nearly 715 hours. Uh, when you are honest to yourself, people, sure, they are on board, but they are perhaps doing other things, and whether they do it right is also a question mark. So this is actually something which also influences the payback time. Uh, and for this example here, we calculated, in theory, a payback time of um, less than two years. So these curves are actually crossing uh, before two years, and then you have even savings. Huh? by using the new gear marine separator concept. Okay, so uh, I think these figures we have already seen in the movie here, just a little bit uh, repeat, huh? but also here. Um, I want to <coughs> express, uh, Nikhil was asking me uh, what is uh, meant uh, by the new marine separator triangle. Yeah, actually to be straightforward, it stands for our entire industry. We as a supplier, we are always here on the bottom. Huh? And when we get an RFQ from these guys here, huh? which is not backed up by the owner or by the technical manager, huh? which is not influenced actively, then it comes at the end of the day to the minimum requirements and to the lowest bid. And this is something we want to change. Huh? Or at least we want to create today here the maritime community in the Middle East, uh, kind of awareness. Huh? And this is the first topic. So, I mean, at least you know what is available on the market and what are actually the theoretical changes, improvements. Huh? But we also ask you huh, to put that in writing or to stand up when you meet these shipyard people huh, and you write the new building specification <coughs> to uh, put it somewhere in. Huh? <coughs> pioneers are always welcome, huh? because without pioneers, huh, no change, of course, and uh, cost reduction, as I said, uh, is definitely something we can uh, we can deliver. This is uh, new innovation uh, things. Yeah, crew has been already mentioned several times, and I think uh, also here uh, for the next coming years, uh, uh, the youngsters, uh, the interest to work on a ship are perhaps uh, not getting more, even less. Huh? And then the question is what kind of quality we have. Huh? Whether they can properly operate or even change the parts. Huh? I mean, you can answer this question uh, yourself. Huh? So, from um, <coughs> your perspective, just uh, I mean, a quick uh, wrap up here. Huh? Break even, 
uh, between one year and 20, uh, 24 months. Uh, significant simplicity, uh, definitely an increased uptime, also by using the EffiClean system. So no need to, let's say, clean the bowl manually uh, till the first or till 12 months uh, of, uh, of use. And at the end of the day, also a reduction of cost in terms of uh, minimized spare part consumption. So I want to <coughs> go a little bit into uh, the, uh, the single points here. And um, uh, also here, uh, I think uh, the tension is clear. Huh? So the belt already was pulling the spindle to one direction. This was also stress for the bearing. Uh, this is actually not existing anymore. And it has even a um, positive impact on the noise of the equipment. So I mean, sure, for container vessel, it's not so crucial. But uh, for the uh, luxury yard industry, for instance, we have already been approached. And they ask us, hey, cool, huh? this is uh, helping us in terms of, uh, of noise huh? reduction. OK. So uh, yeah, operating period doubled. Uh, I mean, this is perhaps uh, not of <coughs> such an importance, but with the frequency control drive system, you can even stop the bowl faster. Uh, yeah, and the EffiClean system, uh, we spoke about that also uh, uh, in the meeting this morning. Um, it runs for 20 minutes up to 30 minutes, uh, and the cleaning uh, agent is uh, natural, basically, so it is. Uh, Food, food, uh, food rate, yeah. So it can uh, be, let's say, pumped into the sludge uh, holding tank, and it's done. Huh? And it delivers actually pretty good uh, cleaning results. So when you are interested, also here we have uh, leaflets and uh, picture materials from pretty tough applications, and it uh, gives you a good, uh, good idea. Good. <laughs> So here is the cleaning uh, system uh, connected. Sure, huh? it's, an, it's a theoretical environment. Huh? So we have done that in our uh, training center in Oelde. But just to, to show how quick it can be done. And uh, believe it or not, uh, I have even managed uh, to replace the units from a small uh, centrifuge in less than 30 minutes. Huh? So the bolt part is unchanged huh? in comparison to the OSE. You can even uh, use an OSE bowl and uh, fit it into the new... Why is it not working? Yeah, I switched it off, otherwise I have a coupling with the, with the sound. Yeah. This is a countdown timer. I think it's a yeah. 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 So it's running faster, so it doesn't switch for minutes. Huh? So I mean... You saw four screws and the four cables. So that's it. Okay, so um, just a few words in terms of uh, installation. Yeah, uh, the space requirement is also half huh? because the electric motor is now accumulated in the housing, and we have uh, on top of that 360 degree accessibility. You can even let's say uh, decide on a retrofit huh? how to how to install, huh? where to put let's say the, uh, the solid catcher. CO2, um, 
uh, this uh, one is actually based on uh, three OSE80 and two OSE. Uh, this here, three OSE80 and two OSE missing anyway. But uh, also here, I think for for the container vessel here, uh, it's 21,750 uh, kW, no? so which reflects in nearly 3,200 euro uh, cost reduction in terms of uh, electricity every year. Yeah, uh, basically self-explaining, uh, time moves on, uh, dinner is waiting, and uh, not so much time for questions here. Uh, 35 fluoride, I think um, it is well known, so it is a standardized test procedure, specially developed for residual fuel separators to have a comparison in terms of the efficiency. So there's a uh, test liquid specified. This is actually uh, mixed with particles, and then you process it, and you have to count, and at a certain operating point at 85% uh, removal, you have your set point. So here, no? testing with a certified flow rate at 85% efficiency, whenever uh, achieved after 30 minutes, huh? so that's discharge. And that actually is the optimum flow rate according to CFR. Connectivity, IoT, digitalization. Um, just also a few words here. OPCUA stands for um, Open uh, Protocol Communication Unified Architecture, MTP. So I just want to um, explain for what MTP actually uh, stands and what it meant. MTP is Module Type Package, which can be delivered or which will be delivered in future from the module manufacturer. So each and every system has this uh, intelligence and the, the software package uh, will be produced or programmed or designed by companies like GEA. And when it comes to the integration into the SCADA system or the technical management uh, for platform, it can be imported and you have immediately a visualization which is actually representing our philosophy. So the PNID exists, the connection to the measuring points also, uh, why drawing it again, uh, as it is done uh, nowadays, uh, totally nonsense. And also here you have a lot of uh, potential for making mistakes. So on a cruise ship, for instance, they have to check 120,000 uh, measurement, uh, measuring points uh, in the commissioning phase. So and, uh, let's say uh, yard builders or uh, uh, shipyards here focus on cruise ships, they are absolutely keen on this new technology. And as I said, it has been actually triggered or pushed forward by Namur, uh, which is a chemical industry on shore, because they also see, well, whenever we change our process, uh, we have to spend, I mean, thousands of euro for reintegration, for reconfiguration of our control system. Uh, and now it is a bit like drag and drop. So I always compare it with a printer. Uh, Whenever you, let's say, change the maker, you just unplug, uh, and then you uh, connect the new one, and immediately this MTP file will be, let's say, uploaded, and you are ready to print horizontally, vertically, black or white, in a couple of minutes. It's still future music, but uh, working uh, groups are established, and the uh, VDMR, for instance, uh, is uh, pushing that forward, and all these major companies in automation, like Siemens, ABB, Benzeda, uh, Kongsberg, they are actually uh, working on that to make it happen. And this will, I think, also change the maritime industry a lot because this offers us then to do a real condition monitoring of the hardware as well as of this of the process. Uh, you need to have an algorithm in the unit and then you need to decide, well, uh, the process, I mean, runs well, uh, the process product temperature is in the let's say, uh, recommended limits, or are we too low? And then you send a kind of a quick indication to the crew, which can be green, yellow, or red, or even on shore. Huh? And uh, I mean, autonomous shipping, shipping, sure, it's also, I mean, future music, huh? and whether it's applicable for, uh, 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 let's say, conventional vessels, huh? is also another story. But for examples running along the Norwegian coast, uh, when it is battery powered or electric, electrically driven, 
you see um, it's already, um, let's say, implemented. Huh? Yeah, and <clears throat> this technology also offers this uh, HTML5 um, protocol, meaning whatever kind of uh, mobile device you, you have, you carry, you use, you can even, let's say, sit at home with your wife, drink a glass of wine, and check whether the HFO <coughs> separator works good or not. And then you can send the WhatsApp to the crew. Yes. Okay, so before we move into the most interesting part, into the questions, huh? um, I want to, let's say, share our new marketing concept developed by our not only nice looking ladies, but also pretty smart ones. So we decided new element, new challenges. Huh? We need to push forward, and that's why they selected uh, Sebastian Steudner, who is a German big wave surfer. Um, actually, it's a quite, um, yeah, it's a challenging sport. Huh? So they are riding these monster waves. Huh? Uh, and uh, obviously, he has a good life because uh, there are plenty of uh, sponsors like here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, him, you see him also on the Mercedes Benz uh, yeah, advertisements. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Okay, so that's why we said we have to have something new and now we need the broadcast center. Yeah. <laughs> surfer and record holder Sebastian Steudner, who provided our engineers with the inspiration to push the limits of our product development. The result is our new generation of Gia Marine separators. Here are some highlights. At the heart of this revolutionary technology is our integrated direct drive. By combining the motor and spindle in a compact single unit, this groundbreaking technology radically improves efficiency, lowers costs, and makes servicing easier than ever before. Doing scheduled maintenance is as easy as one, two, three. Instead of replacing individual parts, you just order an exchange unit from Gia, swap it, and return the old unit. What is more, our integrated direct drive only requires servicing every 16,000 hours, twice as long as the previous interval. New Gia Marine separators are also 96% more effective than conventional belt-driven separators and set a new CFR certified standard in separation efficiency, particularly when it comes to heavy oils. Because energy is transferred directly to the bowl without the need for belts, you can save as much as 30,000 kilowatt hours per year. Cleaning is more efficient too. With Gia EpiClean, cleaning the separator's distack in only 20 minutes, instead of eight hours dirty manual work. To maximize the use of space, new Gia Marine separators occupy a 50% smaller footprint. For easy installation and exchange, the separator is 360 degrees accessible. And to help future-proof your operation, comes smart connectivity ready. After all, New Gia Marine separators are designed with pushing the limits in mind. Gia, engineering for a better world.
Okay. Thank you very much. Now the question is whether you clap your hands because you like the product or whether you want to have a beer right now. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions from your end? Which I hopefully can answer. Yes, sir. Plenty of questions. But I've never seen this excellent presentation. This is the first time I've seen uh, interface. Sorry. This was a very interesting presentation because you have a very good interface between slides, video, and the way you look at There are some questions here. You can answer them one by one. One is the first one, the separator slide. So, Nikhil, the rest of us don't ask any questions. But these are the two one line answer. Uh, if you ask all the questions, then what are the answers? <laughs> 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 and ask the first question, I start the beer. Second and third, you ask. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> the first, first question that I have. Is uh, there any uh, uh, the first, first question that is, um, you said there's no water requirement for this thing. Um, before the desludging process, how do you get the oil out of the bowl? Yeah, okay, this is a uh, displacement water. Of course, you need then uh, displacement water to be inserted into the bowl to uh, make sure that uh, the oil losses is uh, minimal. No, no I meant there is no water needed when you start the uh, treatment of uh, residual fuel. Sealing water. Sealing water. Sealing water. Sealing water. Sealing water. You don't need sealing water. You, yeah. Don't, yeah. Need sealing. you don't need sealing right. water. And right. before yes. I pass the mic back, uh, <laughs> the second part was the <laughs> confine master that you talked about. You're talking about the electronic part, or are you talking about the clarifier itself? It's a combination of both. So the separator is coming with the ability to operate up to 110 degrees C instead of usually 98. And you can also uh, adjust the throughput because in a, let's say, standard configuration, it is optimized and it runs. Uh, and there's actually not too much room to, let's say, to control or to reduce. And uh, if you want to have it, let's say, in an high exec ex ex execution, then you can even take external signals and you do it automatic. Otherwise, you just have the uh, pre-programmed uh, um, uh, function which you have to press. So you have, a, of course, standard operation, you have a um, high uh, temperature uh, mode, and you have a kind of uh, yeah, uh, additional cleaning uh, uh, sequence. It's like running your probably uh, your, your private car, and you can also select the uh, Echo, uh, Sport, or uh, whatever. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it was it was a very nice presentation. Thank you. Now, you know, with with every upgradation, with every upgradation on a on a unit from the previous one, it always comes along with some disadvantages. Always there are problems and disadvantages. In this particular type, what I what I can see or what what I can feel, when you have made a, made a compact drive unit along with the motor, in event of motor getting burnt or the drive unit getting damaged internally, what is the other option? Then we are we are the the purifier is incapacitated, or do we have the expertise to get this thing done on board, or we can dismantle this and we can uh, bring back in operation? This good question. The standard answer is, it's quite seldom that you have for the old set of centrifuges spare electric motors on shelf. I mean, when an uh, electric motor burns right now huh, in a belt-driven centrifuge, you are in the same unlikely situation. Huh? I don't know or I cannot imagine that, uh, I mean, your company or your vessels have a full set of uh, spare electric motors. The second thing is, as you could see also in the movies, um, the overhaul or the repair will not be done by the crew anymore. So we take the unit back and you get a refurbished or reconditioned one. And uh, with the logistic system being in place, we have uh, now three logistic hubs. One is uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, the second one is in Europe, Central Europe, next to uh, the airport of Cologne, and the third one is in uh, the US. And we 
strongly actually or we are confident uh, that uh, the delivery of a new reconditioned unit in a major port can be done in less than two days. Or if you like, uh, I mean also right now you can also order a spare bowl and uh, if you, let's say, sleep better when you have a additional drive <laughs> cassette, cassette in, your, in your warehouse, then you can of course order one. Uh, uh. But we do not recommend because we actually have tests uh, made and we have also uh, uh, OSF uh, separators up and running on major, uh, 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 let's say, uh, shipping companies and uh, they deliver extremely good results. So we do not recommend to buy an additional spare part drive unit. Just trust care. Yeah. It's cool, huh? <laughs> Yes, sir. I have a question about the uh, CAD Fine Master. Uh, just tell me whether uh, the CAD Fine Master will be a standard supply with the, with the separator or it will be uh, from the owner's uh, requirement that the, the CAD Fine Master will be supplied along with the, uh, with the separator. This is number one question. And number two question is uh, whether you are operating uh, the CAD Fine Master in series or in parallel, or, or you are running it all the time. So this is my dear few questions which are, which are interrelated. Okay, <clears throat> then uh, let me start from the back to the beginning. Uh, what we see now, uh, now we have a purifier, and uh, this formerly uh, serial operation is not uh, practice anymore. So you have two units or three running on HFO, yeah. huh? that's it. And it is an option, of course. So if you have difficulties uh, with your fuel or you already, let's say, had uh, unexpected expenses in terms of uh, engine repairs, huh? I mean, I have a bunch of uh, picture material here where even the filter candles uh, were completely gone huh? and ended up in the uh, injector nozzles. Um, then you have to trigger also here huh? the yard in the new building phase and to push the cat fine master through. You as the owner, I mean, you place the order, you can influence <coughs> the music. Huh? The yard has to play, frankly speaking. Huh? It's not uh, actually standard. And then also the way of the configuration, whether you want to have it, let's say, mechanically, I mean manual, or you want to have these uh, additional features, this needs to be discussed. Huh? So if uh, your cat finds are supplied like uh, 60 or 80, uh, 80 ppm, then uh, in that case, uh, or above that, you have to use the cat finds. And you never know the, the fuel what you are getting. <coughs> Maybe you have a little more than the, the, required, the required one of the standard ones. So, and now you don't have the, uh, the cat, uh, cat find monitor on board. In that case, you're stuck. So don't you think it's, it's better to have a cat find monitor? Of course, owner will have to pay a little more to have a cat find monitor on board. But uh, it will be safer to to have that cat find master installed already, and then once you need it, then you can start the cat find master, and then you get rid of the, the cat find. Yeah, basically, uh, we are promoting this technology. Huh? It is an let's say advanced configuration. It is a hot separation execution, which is. Um, higher in price. Uh, and we come again back to the question, what is the minimum requirement and what is foreseen and what is actually considered uh, to make the, uh, let's say, engine, engine oil or the uh, what is it, fuel oil treatment plant uh, uh, ready for even difficult fuel compositions. Uh, it's a question of the philosophy, but we are not giving it away for free, in other words. Uh, what's, what's the price? What's the price of a small uh, just to compare a standard setup for an HFO centrifuge and this uh, uh, CatFine Master, there's a gap of uh, 30% over the thumb, just a ballpark figure. So is it running in series or in parallel with the, with the normal uh, centrifugal purifier? No, you can just, uh, uh, let's say, uh, take it instead. It's so it's, or you can even go on existing vessels, that's what we have also done many times, uh, mm -hmm. I mean exactly for these reasons, uh, an upgrade. So then we check the, uh, let's say, heaters, well, whether they have enough uh, spare capacity, perhaps <laughs> have, then you can even increase without uh, mechanical modifications. Then it's a question of the control panel, and then you need to replace the pump, and the electric motor, and the gaskets, and that's it. Uh, 
more difficult question. Uh, why your purifier or a separator cannot take care of the cat funds alone? Well, we, <laughs> take, we take care of the cat funds. Um, within the CFR uh, limits, as long as there are only 60 ppm cat funds in the bunker fuel, don't be worried. But I can tell you, when you review bunker reports, huh, it is unfortunately quite often exceeding. And this is a safety margin which you can take. Hopefully, this so will, yeah, yes, sir. One question. Um, when you say that the cleaning is much faster when compared to the eight hours that is required for the other type of uh, purifier, why do you say that? What is the uh, design aspect that is making this quicker to clean? Yeah. Uh, in the past, you had to open the hood, you had to take out the bowl, and you had to clean all the discs, nearly 200, hand by hand, one by one, which is, I tell you, a goddamn nasty job. <laughs> yep. huh? Because you have, I mean, I did that also, I mean, a decade ago, but uh, your fingers are entirely black, huh? unless you have a set of uh, gloves with you, and uh, your girlfriends, they don't like it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, you just, I mean, as you could see in the second movie, you just have this quick coupling. I mean, this is a permanent modification. So you disconnect the product. Yeah? The centrifuge is still running. And then you just uh, pump uh, the cleaning agent through the disc. And after 20 minutes, the job is done. And on top of that, you <coughs> save money because usually whenever you open the bowl, you have to replace the oil yes. and the, the yes. cooling mega So the cleaning agent is doing the job. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so then the, the same cleaning agent can be used on the other pu purifiers too? Of yes. course, yes. Yeah. Yeah. you have one unit and you can just, uh, let's say it's a trolley, you can pull it from, let's say, one to the other. You can also use it for the loop oil centrifuges. Yeah, if you want. Also the same. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's a good one, it's a very good unit. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good feedback. A basic question, what does GIA stand for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is also <laughs> a very good question. I mean, there are different, um, words used in the past, yeah? but uh, I'm happy, <coughs> or actually I can share that I'm quite often using Global Engineering Alliance. Yeah. Global, uh, it, it actually the old German. Yeah, yeah. It was an uh, it's really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> so Global Engineering Alliance. Oh, this is also part of the question huh, at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I, I forgot to mention that. Uh, I mean, we have played out the good questions already fitting to these questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Sorry, sir. Another funny question. When we were students, we were reading about alpha Laval separators. Uh -huh. West Pali and we hardly read. Even after 50 years in the industry, the position is the same. So why you guys don't believe in marketing? <laughs> Actually, we believe in marketing, and that was the reason why I came here today. <laughs> I have a technical question. Yes, <laughs> Any kind of question we can answer, no problem. How do you deal with fuels where the SG is more than one? Density. Oh, the density. Yeah. Okay. That is actually uh, the purpose um, of the unit troll system, so we can uh, even go slightly up. So we don't have a regulating ring, and we don't have this um, uh, ceiling water. Sure, there is a physical limit. Huh? I mean, once you're exceeding, I don't know, like 1.02 or something. Yeah, 1.02, huh? <laughs> then uh, the bowl is most likely to, to open. Huh? And uh, the, uh, the liquid actually then breaks through also for, for for loop oil, yeah, it can happen. But huh? then the, the oil will go to the end. So where will the water go? Because yeah, the, the, the oil more than one, and the water is of course one. So when you're running your purifier, the oil is going to go to the uh, outer. Very free. So yeah. 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 It's yeah. just a factor of the temperature. Yeah. 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 That's why we have 110. Yeah. He heated it. He heated up continuously up to just to get the down. Hi, Spin. I have a question regarding the effect cleaning. You said that it will increase the cleaning interval, right? I mean, no, it will not uh, um, increase the cleaning interval. You are doing it in a different way. 
because uh, also here it always depends on the quality of the bunker fuel. Huh? I mean, I'm not saying that uh, you have to open the bowl after, let's say, 2,000 running hours, but we see a tendency that uh, more operators have to do it because there's too much contamination of the disk and the efficiency is whatever low. Yeah. So then you do it with this cleaning agent instead of manually. Okay, so that's why my question is that, I mean, in, even in certain cases where the bunker is not that so good, with this cleaning agent, you can't get a hundred percent efficiency that you can do. I mean, like manual cleaning. Is that correct? Um, this is not one hundred percent correct. Uh, you have also, I mean, you have to find a balance. Huh? Sure. I mean, I'm not telling you that this look like brand new. Huh? I mean, that would be uh, wrong. Huh? But uh, you have also less mechanical stress on the disc. Because whatever people are doing this kind of job, perhaps you have also seen that they are using sharp tools and so on, and they make it even worse. Or the, uh, let's say, period to use the disk before they are clocked is getting shorter and shorter because the surface is totally destroyed. It's, uh, yeah. Are there any other questions? Hi, thank you for... Uh Amazing uh, presentation. I have a question regarding the CAT card, the module which you showed. Uh, is it also sensing exactly the PPM of CAT fines and the sizes, and then it is monitoring it, or how is that working? Um, yeah, we uh, have a cooperation with a company from uh, Scandinavia, and uh, it's exactly doing as you said. So it is constantly taking samples, and it detects the, um, uh, what is it, um, the size, Article size, as well as uh, the, the, um, uh, the, PPM, yeah. Yeah, PPM, yeah. the concentration. So it <coughs> in display, <coughs> also the, uh, if it is overshooting the size and then the discharge has to be, you know, I mean it is controlling the discharge also? I mean the, the unit comes with a, with, a, um, with a separate control panel and you even have a, a, a constantly recording. This can also be used uh, as a, I mean, as a, as a, as a sharper huh, to prove that uh, the fuel was all the time in a good condition. Huh? Whenever it comes to an unexpected, let's say, damage or whatsoever. You can get a lock. Yeah, you get a lock. Yeah, correct. But I mean, we have additional presentation material for that, or even data sheets. I mean, we can send it later on to you here. Just uh, ask Pfizer, he will prepare a set of uh, uh, files for you. Huh? But, but there we see, in, in general, just to add that, uh, I mean, significant potential, right? because, but on the other hand, what is, I mean, we discussed this yesterday with this small gentleman here, huh? uh, doing monitoring is one thing, sure, huh? then you have a lock, but changing the process, huh? perhaps even doing that uh, with a higher priority, that is another story. Huh? So I would prefer to pay a bit more attention on the process huh? to make that, I mean, more efficient and uh, consider a monitoring system at a second stage. Huh? I mean, this is also not uh, FOC. Huh? This costs, uh, I mean, significant uh, amount of money. Okay, Steve. I think thank you for the presentation. I think Welcome. we discussed yesterday. Yes. There is one big issue happening internationally, I think, for most people in the house, that there is a bad bunker issue that has started from Houston, and I think 200 businesses have been affected. Now, there's a very smart oil majors who are playing up this bad bunker issue. Now, there's basically actually two things. It is passing the standard specs of uh, the ISO standards, but the CAD fines are much higher amount and are varying actually. That's the one biggest issue. And second part is this particular component of bad fuel. These are about assets now, fatty assets and other assets. Mm -hmm. And we are using DA and we are willing to go further because the crew is not able to find exactly what has to be done. Yeah. And this is a trading under a pattern of continuous. You know, you take bunker at Russia, by the way, you get the results taking you 10 days. So basically, earlier days what used to happen that you would get good results and everything was running fine. But the issue that the, the fuel supply is too bad a quality. So kind of an automation or something which will at least serve the purpose for the crew and for the owners. I think that is where the J is helping us, I think. Thank you for that. I think most of the questions are answered. So the monitoring system is one of the best systems that is helping the crew actually. Because he wants to know what is happening actually on the purifier. Now what was happening is the earlier alpha level G, whatever the type of purifier that we're running, the monitoring system was a little weak. You only have something come in and pass, and you can't ask the chief engineer to keep settling it from the service tank and go up and down. 
and that was giving a big effect to the engine manufacturers and the makers. So there was no constant solution. It was a like you know cat and ball issue. You know, you go to one, you go to legislation, everything was going. I hope this would be a one kind of solution way forward. I think so. Still, there is something more to be done. I think thanks for that presentation. Yeah, I mean, just one uh, additional comment here on this acid issue. Huh? Yeah, we also had uh, claims, or at least uh, clients, uh, who came back with a totally destroyed disk deck and even bolt parts. Huh? And the most interesting part is uh, that when, even when you take a sample huh, of the bunker and you do a, let's say, standard uh, analysis, you don't see. You don't see it because it only comes out when you have the temperature of, let's say, 98 or whatever degree C. And then you have this, uh, I mean, two-hour circle, and it is rotating, uh, the water with the acid, and then you have this chemical reaction, which is uh, super aggressive. But sure, uh, what can be done? Uh, it's difficult to measure uh, when you, let's say, take bunker, and uh, it's a pretty complex, actually, also process, and you have to constantly also check manually or even to open and to, to check physic physically uh, whether there are actually pittings already on the discs uh, caused, by, caused by that. Uh. Uh, there is a, uh, the test that is called down the GCMS test for the fuel oil, which is taking basically 10 working days to do that thing. And it's only available in Houston, Singapore and Fujera with VPS and the Vishwa Marine Labs and all that. So basically it's taking long time before you can have this. Plus the contaminants are a long list of assets. If you see there's more than 40 numbers of new assets which are basically a plastic products, which are put in by the industry, by the oil majors or whatever. There's a big ploy against it. The solution here is nothing but a step forward, you know. Nothing can be done by the crew. They have been really working very hard on the purifier room. I'm telling you, it's a very serious issue. Uh, we have got three claims against it now. As I don't want to go more disclose on it. There are very serious issues for the owners that we're facing, you know. Especially when engines get affected very fast, some are taking some time. But the condition of the liners, that all basically is coming up very, very bad. Especially the fuel injection components and all. Yep. So yep. purifier is the one way between. What best it can do, will do. But most people are trying to fit up the cat guards and everything else. So this is the new way of going in 2020 with the new fuel. So more challenges coming on the way. Hope that we meet it at some point of time. What will the purifier do with acid? Uh, it's not about acid. Now what is happening is, basically there is, it cannot be filtered out. These acids which are coming, they cannot be filtered on the ship, they can't be done anything. But what basically you have to burn it out at point in time because you take it in say Russia and you want to go to one long way. So you're doing it basically filtering it more and more to get to the better state of uh, the filter and the purification. The ship cannot do anything else because these compositions are like, you know, fatty acid, they're like plastic. The no, what I'm saying is purifiers do the cat fire, they reduce the cat fire. Yeah, but not the acid. So yeah, the, the, the acid. Uh, finds the way into the, uh, the water phase. Huh? And uh, when you, let's say, keep uh, circulating it, then the acid eats the centrifuge yes. and the distance. Instead of the engine. Instead of, yeah, if you're lucky, instead of the engine. But unfortunately, uh, you still have a kind of uh, carryover uh, into the, uh, uh, the day tank. Yeah, uh, then you will only keep recirculating if you know there's acid. Mm -hmm. the yeah, 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 yeah. This is exactly the point. Or you, I mean, you just do it uh, like uh, the so, uh, The VPS is giving the first uh, results in three days' time. Then this uh, with acid, uh, they give the actually what is the basic acid, yes or no. Then the second tier is coming in seven days, and the last exactly the list of acids is coming in ten days' time. So what yeah. basically is done? But this is not to be done. But I cannot suggest this kind of a issue here. What it starts is basically, after you get from three days onward, you start to getting into a better system of, you know, heating up the things and all that, because these are plastics actually. They're not supposed to be the fuel. If you go to any of these sites now and see, they're not supposed to come into fuel in any way. Now, how it is coming in, it's a long story. To cut it short, it is very simple that industry is going, <laughs> now we can say good news, it is reducing. But the same time, the cat fan is finding its way now, again, which is a new product. I think in the last few weeks, we're finding it. So one or the other thing is happening bad. So there's no solution as it's such, as you said, it's not easy as it looks like from outside. Mm -hmm. The problem is MAPO makes it very clear that the vessel has to be provided with fuel fit for use. No yes. one uses MAPO against the bunker supply. No, no, what the MAPO is saying ISO, uh, the no, standard no, space. MAPO doesn't say ISO 8217. The bunker contract says 8217. 
The supplier gets away by saying, I supplied you fuel as K217 compliant. Exactly. But MAPOL doesn't say. Please read MAPOL. No, no, what I'm saying is the fuel requirement is 8217. No, not as per MAPOL. MAPOL says the fuel should be fit for purpose. So what the fuel says is there should not be any substance added which is not fit for purpose. But that's only one line definition. If you see the report, I can share it with you. No substance should be added which is not fit for fuel. Now, then, what is coming is 40 list of items now. Fatty acids which are coming, saturated acids and all. These are 40 list of items. You see, it's like a chemical lab, you know. The, you see the long list of the report that comes from GCMS. The cost is $1,200 against the standard specs of $250. So price difference is too high, only limited labs are doing it. And insurance is not able to get legislation because it's taking long time to process their fine. So it's a very complex story to really cover it on in 15 or 10 minutes. But this is a mystery actually, nothing more. Absolutely, I agree. Yeah. Uh, Sven, I have two final questions regarding your program. And then we need to push forward because uh, of the drinks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even I'm waiting for that. Those who want to start with the beer then. Um, you have a replacement motor. You should, in your video, you showed four tires being replaced. Um, with the quality of crew, on one hand, you've got the crew, two, you have the rolling pitching, you have the heat, you have everything. Do you think Kia can design the same replacement motor without those four wires being removed and put back? This is the reason I'm asking. In the changing of those four wires, rather than putting them in the sequence that they're supposed to put the interchange in it, running the other way will be a problem. And now, you can yeah. be a technical answer for this. The second thing is taking it out and taking, putting it back in. What I could make out was the four wires are going through a hole, and they've again got to be extracted, put through. Chances of damage, chances of shorts, you're increasing that. Second, you're talking about disbalancing. Somebody asked about the cleaning process. There's a, there'll be a disbalancing of the board because if there are particles left between the plates, how do you address these two issues? The first question is really good. I had that before. And uh, we were sitting with PED, you muckle together, and uh, you won't believe it. Huh? But to design a kind of stupid proof plug huh, is theoretically possible. But it costs a fortune. Because almost the same like the motor. Okay. Plug it. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. We did it. And you do it only you do it only once in two years. Yes. It's, a, it's a cost issue. And the, okay, the cables, unless you are color blind, <laughs> they have a color coding. There's also a bit of German. I mean, if you I mean, if they really make a mess, then they're really a cool issue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, pulling out the cables and uh, bringing them back through the hole is actually, I mean, I have done it myself, it's not a big deal. Sure, if you are also here, I mean, doing it extremely careless, huh, then you can, of course, damage the isolation. Huh? But honestly, I mean... So we started with the topic that, yes, the people... The yeah. quality of yeah, yeah. CPRS is not as good. Yeah. But I mean, the just only difference here is guiding the cable through the hole. Uh, I mean, or even putting a kind of uh, supporter to pull it uh, from is uh, not, so, uh, so not so challenging. Uh. But uh, perhaps we have to modify all the other things. Our are not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Then I hand you. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sven. Absolutely enlightening. Uh, you can see the number of questions. I had to cut it short. Sorry, but Sven is still av available to answer questions later on as we uh, enjoy some of the hospitality upstairs. Yeah, for so, me, I mean, uh, it's also uh, pretty nice uh, to have you all together and uh, to contribute to this, uh, I mean, community. I mean, we have done this also in Europe uh, over the last couple of weeks and uh, also at universities. It also gives a bit spirit in our industry since uh, the last years haven't been easier and uh, hopefully the future is uh, better and brighter for all of us, huh? put it this way. So that's why I also liked it pretty much. Something, you said that no water needed, but now uh, somebody uh, 
they have uh, come up uh, with the acid issue in the fuels, then don't you think we need water? Okay, you, you have the, uh, a certain amount of water in the bunker fuel. Uh, no, and see, that, that water which is uh, in the bunker fuel, yeah. that's the reason the molecules of uh, acid, they are separated from the fuel itself and they go into the rotation in water phase. Yeah. But if we have a sort of pH sensor, and if it senses the fuel when it is going for recirculation, that there is very low pH, there should be a provision to in, uh, inject water in the process and wash that acid out. So it will save the purifier itself, the discs, and plus it will save the engine as well. I think the idea actually sounds uh, feasible. I, uh, I take it actually back and uh, I will let you know. But it is not FOC. <laughs> no, I, no, I haven't said that it is not foreseen. Uh, I mean, right now it is not existing, put it this word, but uh, I mean the idea to uh, really to, to, uh, to measure pH on this uh, uh, discharge water uh, sounds for me uh, not too bad, honestly. Uh. Yeah, good question uh, covered, but uh, that was the last question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, will, uh, I will ask uh, some closing remarks from uh, Sunil uh, Kumar, the uh, Managing Director of uh, GIA Westphalia Middle East. Uh, Sunil. Good evening, everyone. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I launched, uh, I believe, I mean now you don't want to think I'm too old now, <laughs> this C generation in early 2000s on the same forum, not to so many people there, it was like 30, 40 people, we thought that was a, a, a moment when uh, a change in generation and there's a big step. And now I look at the F generation, uh, the direct drive, uh, you can see the change. I mean, it's, it's, it's a phenomenal uh, improvement uh, and a uh, complete change of uh, the playing field in centrifuges. For, uh, for me here, I mean, we are also dealing with centrifuges in other areas of operation. We are talking about dairy separators, edible oil separators, starch separators. We have been doing this already for quite some years. So eight, this, more than eight years. More than eight years is are operating in all over the British and they are not doing this uh, capacity. They are doing double, triple. We talk about capacities in the range of 60,000 60, litres per hour we handle. Absolutely reliable. The only guy complaining, I tell you, is this guy sitting here, head of service, shaker. He doesn't get any more business. They don't talk to him. They even forget that there is, is that they don't even have his visiting card anymore. So that's the issue we have. So I remember the day when the C generation was lost. I was complaining, you have taken away a lot of our service business here. Now when I look at F, I don't know where we're going from here <laughs> unless we are able to make more money selling the centrifuges. So that's my few words because I come from the uh, energy and marine background. I've been selling these separators. I've been on ships. I know how difficult it is. I've been on Fujera. I've been in a few ports here in UAE in my early days. So I'm a bit old now. So it, it's not easy. So this would be a wonderful, uh, I mean, I know it's reliable. I know you can Michael, the guy who's designed the other separators for the other applications is also the one who designed this. And when he presented to us five years back how this will be done, and I was shaking was with me in Germany, and I said, shit, this is going to destroy our service business. So that's it. Thank you very much. And again, very lively participation. It's a pleasure being here. In fact, it's almost nostalgia for me to be associated with marine engineers. After a long, long time, I've been doing too much of food and other businesses these days. <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure seeing you all. Thank you. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you very much for your kind words about marine engineers. Uh, speaking of which, the Institute of Marine Engineering Science and Technology host these kind of discussions uh, for knowledge sharing. Uh, most of you are aware this is done 100% uh, on a voluntary basis. And joining me today is uh, Sheet Cabral, who is the honorary treasurer. She is still here. He's gone out. Uh, and, and the whole, uh, the whole uh, presentation today has been recorded on what we call the IMRS TV. Uh, Mr. Bilal uh, Al Habash is the uh, I call him the director of uh, uh, the production director of the IMRS TV. 
So the whole presentation uh, of uh, five hours has uh, will be will be beamed uh, to our 23,000 members uh, all over the world. Including the beer? No, <laughs> that part no. Uh, but uh, meetings such as these are possible when uh, people like you in the audience suggest the IMRS platform as a, an appropriate place for uh, companies at the forefront of maritime technology to enlighten us uh, in the Middle East uh, maritime fraternity on the most recent developments within their own organizations. And that too on a, uh, on a uh, it's almost like a CSR initiative. Because obviously, uh, like uh, Sven rightly said, and I told him many times, uh, I want it to be a technical, it's not me, it's not me, it's our people here who want it to be a technical presentation because uh, many of you in your offices come in here uh, one after the other, uh, some, uh, some vendor trying to sell you something or the other, whether you need it or not. So um, the very fact that all of you are here, which we thank you for being here this evening, is that you're interested in the technology. And we hope we've lived up to your expectations as we always do. As of today, today's whole meeting has been possible because uh, of a single individual who believed that the IMRS platform was uh, an appropriate platform for, for gear to present your new generation of uh, purifiers. Uh, I'm also happy to announce that he is a fellow member of the Institute of Marine Engineers, the highest level of membership that can be achieved by a member. And I will invite uh, this gentleman to hand over a token of appreciation to, uh, to Sven. Uh, from the IMRS, uh, may I ask you to come up on here, um, Farid Ahmad. <laughs> Sven, all yours. You deserve it. That's amazing. You deserve two of them. That's amazing. I didn't uh, expect it, honestly. Thank you very much.